Hey guys, you are listening to Otoconia Radio. My name is Connor. I'm doing a quick intro to this episode. This episode was Chase's bonus episode. He picked the album How to Be a Human Being by Glass Animals. This album was so fun to record. It was very silly. It had a lot of memes and a lot of jokes. Uh, so thank you for listening. Before we get into the episode, I just wanted to say that our uh, podcast has two formats on YouTube. There is no music. It's just the commentary uh, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. The music is edited in between the commentary. So pick whatever format you wish. Uh, in addition, I wanted to highlight a couple sponsors of our podcast. Uh, we're very fortunate to have them. And they really have some great stuff that I generally enjoy. But before that, please check out our Venmo. Our username is on our Instagram and we post it on YouTube. Uh, First and foremost, this podcast is just for fun. We're just students trying to de-stress and spend time with each other. But if you guys would like to donate, the money would go to podcasting equipment and obtaining vinyls. So if there's a specific vinyl you guys want us to see us review, you can send us a Venmo and put in the caption what album you'd like us to obtain. Without further ado, I would like to introduce some of our sponsors. So the first couple sponsors are all independent artists. Um, the first one, she is from Spain, so I hope I am pronouncing her name correctly, but it is Marimar Sorigue Rivera. Uh, like I said, I apologize if I mispronounce any of that, but she has an amazing website, an amazing Instagram. Her Instagram account is S-O-R-I-V-A-R-T. You can find her website link in her description. Amazing artwork. It really goes with some of the themes that we discuss on Otoconia Radio with some of her albums. Very existential, postmodern pieces of work that really make you think kind of in that absurdist and uh, just that vein of art. I mean, it really is thought-provoking. It's really She's really talented, so please check her out. Um, really amazing work and a big fan of the podcast, so thank you. Our next sponsor is also an artist. His name is Dan Friss. Please check him out on Instagram. His Instagram account is dan.fris. He has this really interesting style of painting. It's a combination, in my opinion, of Lichtenstein, who's this pop artist who did dot art, and cosmic horror, you know, kind of like Lovecraft, Lovecraft and Cthulhu. Um, I cannot wait to get some of his artwork hanging up in our studio. Please check him out. I think you guys will really enjoy. So up next, we have a couple sponsors who are in 3D printing, uh, very interesting and very talented artists. So our first one is Triple Dimensions. You can find him on Instagram on triple.dimensions. He's a 3D printer out of Belgium. He makes some awesome stuff. I cannot wait to get my hands on some Otoconia themed 3D printing products in the future. So please check him out. Uh, long time fan of the podcast. Really nice guy. Please check him out. And then our second 3D printer sponsor for this episode, uh, his Instagram account, it is T. 0RDS underscore 99, so towards underscore 99. He is His name is Logan T. He is based in France, and he has some amazing 3D prints. I mean, he has this new Iron Man sculpture. He has a sculpture of the clown from It, Baby Yoda, uh, Groot. Uh, we really love his art, and again, we cannot wait to get some of his stuff in our studio. So our final sponsor for today's episode, her name is Phoenix. Uh, her Instagram handle is alter uh, naively underscore indie a l t e r n a t i v e l y underscore indie. She has this really interesting uh, channel in which she shows off her inst uh, her her vinyl collection with fashion, art, photography. It really is cool, and we appreciate uh, people like this who are in the vinyl community kind of welcoming. Uh, Otokonia to the scene. So thank you. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Um, we really appreciate all of you guys and we appreciate the listeners. So we'll get right into the episode. You're listening to How to Be a Human Being by Glass Animals. This is Chase's Ear Rocks for your ear rocks. <laughs> nah, I'm going to have some chicken soup for dinner. It's the vibe. It's cold the, as hell. The OG. But anyway, welcome guys to this episode of Otokonia Radio. Uh, I am your co-host, Connor, and I'm joined by Hara and Chase. Uh, today is Chase's moment in the limelight. He's gone from producer to member 
and full-fledged star of Otoconia. The people demanded it. So as it deserved. Mm -hmm. And we are doing one of Chase's picks. Uh, we we're going to do Glass Animals, How to Be a Human Being. So Chase, why don't you start us off with kind of the thought of why you picked this album? We're very excited. Yeah, so uh, I've been listening to Glass Animals for a few years now. Uh, a friend of mine uh, suggested them to me, and this was the first album that he suggested. He had this album on vinyl. Um, and it's one of the only albums that, for me, I really enjoy listening, like, start to finish. can listen to every song in order. usually don't skip. Um, so I think it's very interesting. A lot of different sounds in it, cool stories. Um, and Glass Animals has exploded in popularity this past year because of heat waves. Uh, but I think as much as I do like the current album, this uh, album is probably my favorite of theirs. So to anyone who has heard heat waves blasted millions of times in the past year, here's another uh, album of theirs to check out. Awesome. And some Otoconia context for you guys, a little segment I like to do to give the people some war. Uh, Chase and I recorded this episode as one of the I think this, the first bonus episode, Chase was going to be the debut, the star, uh, the main face of Otoconia. And then I tragically sabotaged his episode because uh, I didn't want him getting too too large for his britches. So here we yeah, are. Yeah, you want to put him in the lemon light instead of the lime light. And the people were like, no, down with Connor. Yeah, we all know it's because I referenced your OnlyFans and you wanted to edit that out. But <laughs> I will give it to the people. <laughs> Amazing. So what we're going to try to do this episode is hit all the awesome jokes that we hit on the last episode that were lost tragically due to my sabotaging. But let's get into it. Chase, should I give him a quick overview of the album How to Be Human, a Human Being by Glass Animals? Go for it. So in my, my research, you know, the Otoconia libraries, the archives have shown that this is the second album by Glass Animals, and they're kind of categorized in an indie rock genre. And so this was this album was following the release of their debut studio album, Zaba. Uh, Glass Animals began an aggressive tour. And when I say aggressive, I mean aggressive, in which they played over 140 concerts in Europe, Australia, United States, and Mexico. So very interesting. This is kind of them, you know, blasting into the, the lemon light, as Hurrah put it. And this is a really interesting and really cool album. I had never listened to Glass Animals before, so it's pretty cool that you know, Chase, you were able to share this with me. And I think it's a great album. It's got a really cool story and a really good thematic uh, message to it. That kind of, I was going to say thematic theme, but I saw her <laughs> giggling. The and theme I, I saw, is baby boy, Connor. The theme is baby boy. <laughs> we'll get into that later. Yes, yeah. you will understand what it means, the baby boy. Can mm -hmm. I throw in a fun fact and then Chase can throw in a fun fact? For sure, let's do it. Okay, Chase's fun fact what? Oh, no, you go first. Oh, okay. I was going to queue up. Oh, you, oh, okay. You have one fun fact that you always bring up. Anyway. Edit that out. No, no, no. No, no, <laughs> no, no keep this in. I want Chase to be shamed. So, <laughs> my fun fact is that Wavy Davy, the main singer of Glass Animals, um, was a medical student for like a year or two, right? He was doing what we do, and then he would like study medicine all day, chug a Red Bull, DJ all night, rinse and repeat for like a year or something. And then he was like, you know what? I'm just gonna not do that anymore. And he decided to dedicate his life to music. So that's a big 180 and I love it. It's basically what Chase does, am I right? I mean, Chase is a big raver. He drinks them ready bowls and hits the rave dance floor with glow sticks, you know? Yeah. I mean, last night, I think we were in bed by like... Yeah, 8 p.m. <laughs> Or I was already getting tired by seven. It's been a long day. <laughs> Amazing. What was your fun fact? What was my fun fact? Colorado? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so on a Reddit AMA that Glass Animals did, uh, they said that their favorite concert venue was Red Rocks uh, in Colorado because it's like the best amphitheater mm. that's pretty much out there. It's phenomenal. Yeah, they have all these red rocks that are rocks and red. red. I know. <laughs> Talk about lemon light. Amazing. I, I'm so glad we're here for the people or they do without us. And these are the, this is why people listen to Otoconia. It's because these are the hard hitting facts of life that no one else tells you. 
Shout out to Reddit, by the way. Our Reddit fans, uh, they love Otoconia. Um, okay. <laughs> I didn't know we were lying to the people now. <laughs> yeah, I have to, uh, I have to uh, disguise myself when we go into the Reddit world. This is yeah. not an unseasoned podcast. We now have a degree of salt that has been sprinkled in. <laughs> Otoconia context, a little bit of lore for the people. Uh, battle the bands. Y- you'll find out someday. <laughs> one of these days one of these Crack days only fans for the real deal <laughs> all the tea the uh, hey, hey. <laughs> so chase i have some interview questions for you mm-hmm. so yeah. I, I already asked you why did you pick this album um I, I think you already touched on it this is a great pick i mean it kind of like i said it has a lot of cool messages that kind of goes hand in hand with our billy eilish episode and you, you told us that one of your friends recommended this to you. So I think we already nailed that one down. But when did you first listen to this album? What were you doing? Where were you? What was, what was the vibe? We need a vibe check. Uh, I mean, my friend had already been listening to this band because of their first album, Zaba. Um, so I'm not sure when this album came out, but shortly after it came out, uh, probably like 2016, 2017, um, hanging out at uh, this guy's apartment and he has like a whole bunch of vinyl albums he put this one on I think we we're just kind of like hanging out um just kind of like chatting and yeah as we're talking like part of my brain is like pulled out of the conversation like wait shit this is really good like who is this band um so yeah that's how I first heard this album so you were basically being wine and dined and this album spoke to you yeah it works very effectively on me <laughs> and Chase, what, what did this mean to you the first time you kind of really sat down, looked at the lyrics, listened to it? I, I think on our first uh, recording of this, we talked about how when you kind of just listen to the music and don't pay attention to the lyrics, you know, it's kind of got this like poppy, indie rock kind of upbeat vibe. But then yeah. when you start looking at the lyrics and like the stories, I mean, it's just incredible, isn't it? Oh, yeah. No, it's just like it's really cool to listen to. Uh, like some of the songs I'd listen to when I would go running or something um back when i used to actually run um back when you had young man knees yeah yeah. um but yeah it's just like kind of fun to listen to cool sounds to it and then some of the songs on it the lyrics like oh shit it's got punched in the gut where the hell did this come from so i thought that was really cool is this um this is the album where all the songs are based on people that were met yeah um i don't know if this was it hasn't been mentioned this episode but Basically, every song was inspired by a character met on tour. So, mm-hmm. um, a story, a person. An anthology. An anthology. Anthropological anthology. The Lemon Light. <laughs> we should tag a ourselves. A baby at- boy. <laughs> <laughs> we should tag ourselves at the end of this album, you know. Yeah. I'm baby boy. I'm Lemon Light. I'm definitely season two, episode three. Just eating mayonnaise straight out of the jar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so chase what is your favorite song off this album i mean agnes uh far and away it's i agree uh my favorite song uh a really good song uh not a pump me up song but yeah really good it's a take you down song that it is amazing and what is is this your favorite glass animals album to date uh yes i think it's probably my favorite one of theirs um maybe not necessarily the ones i listen to the songs most of but the one i can look at is like that's probably the one that you know it's the first one i listened to um yeah the other ones like their first album a lot of really cool songs like hits those vibes real good uh the most recent album i think is interesting because part of it was done with uh quarantine in mind so it really uh catches the current vibes really well but yeah this one's probably my favorite like artistically particularly of theirs and dreamland is eternal for covid vibes but really is (laughs) it really do be hitting right here Mm. in the heart and the gut amazing last interview question before we get into the album itself what about this music, you know, whether it be the genre, the musical style, the lyrics, the band, what makes you gravitate towards Glass Animals? Uh, well, whenever Spotify gives me my, like, rewind at the end of the year, uh, it says, like, my top things that I listen to or, you know, most 
BS like genres. And so this one falls, I think, pretty solidly in Indie Tronica. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like a Tron movie sequel. Yeah. Um, so it's right in my alley for what I listen to generally. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, this and another uh, artist that I listen to, Rainbow Kitten Surprise, uh, also a great uh, band. Despite the name. Uh, Find it in the Hello Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe for a future episode. Um, and yeah, I haven't found other bands that sound very similar to Glass Animals that really pull off their same sort of uh, vibe. Amazing. Alrighty, guys. So you heard it from here first from Chase, Spotify, Overlords. Uh, they will pick the music for you. They, they, know, what you, what, they know what you need. I'll hail the algorithm. And Spotify doesn't block us like YouTube. So shout out to the Spotify overlords. You have one Otaconia over. Um, but let's get into it. So if you're listening to the Spotify edition or the Apple Music edition of the podcast, you'll be hearing the music interplayed between the commentary. If you're listening on YouTube, you'll just hear the commentary. So choose your own adventure. Turn to page five if you want to hear the music. So we're going to start off with life itself. And this is where we do a fake pause for the edit, you know? We'll, we'll yeah, behind, a little behind, behind the scenes the movie magic. Uh-huh. I'm going to go blow my nose. Yeah, Chase got to blow his nose. He's got a big boy boogie. Yeah, it's for the uh, other musical aspect of this podcast. Mm. We're not going to cut that out. That's for the people. And so they know I live with an elephant. Yeah, we'll send you a bonus Otaconia surprise if you can guess what the fuck that was. Check us out on Patreon. No, <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, welcome back, Life Itself. Chase, do you want to start us off? Uh, yeah. Uh, the song, I think, starts off the album on, uh, you know, really strong note, like really comes out swing. Um, and... This is definitely one of those songs that can listen to without paying any attention to lyrics and it's a great vibe. Lyrics are interesting. It's one of the, I think, more character-driven uh, songs on this album. And yeah, uh, start off there. What do you think about it, Connor? I think would it would be a great idea if we did a separate episode where we went through the music videos of some of the albums that we talked about. Because in mm. particular, I think this whole album in general has very artistic music videos, a lot of symbolism, really good film and kind of framing, directing, you know, even the color scheme. I mean, these music videos are really well done. And this opening music video, I mean, it starts with these kind of tribal drums and this like uneasy synthesizer that's kind of like a siren. And you kind of watch this bizarre story unfold with all these characters that are somewhat interrelated and you don't know exactly who they are or what it means yet. So it's kind of a bizarre opening to this album. And I think that's kind of the point. If you look at the lyrics, I mean, it really does go about the strangest of being human, which is, you know, an interesting way to start off the album that's titled How to Be a Human Being in the song Life Itself. So we got a very bizarre intro, really funky guitar. And, you know, we see that these characters are struggling to reconcile with the strangeness of fitting in. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really good start to an album kind of like takes you aback you know you're like what is this what'd you yeah. think Ra? what'd you think Ra? I mean I um like this song and it's kind of funny because you come out the gate running with this song and it feels like a running song and the lyrics are very much like come back like gotta get down on my knees gotta get up gotta, like you know um it's interesting to me that a lot of these characters that are chosen are each broken in a very unique way, um, as we all are. And it reminds me of that like Japanese pottery thing mm. where, no, 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 uh, no, 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 Japanese no, 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 I think usually gold, but think, yeah. You can choose other metals, but I think traditionally it was gold. Um, so we're all pottery and we're all just broken in our own special way. Fill in the cracks with whatever your vice is and you're good to go. That's what this album feels like. Yeah. Like I would, or, oh, sorry. Go uh, ahead, Chase. 
the idea behind that pottery thing is that, you know, when it breaks, it's not, you know, defunct and useless. It's that like the breaking it, you reconstruct it and uh, the fact that it was broken now be adds to its meaning and like uh, new beauty uh, emerges out of it. Please check out our new show on Otokonia, uh, Chase and Hara Teach Japanese Pottery, coming this time. <laughs> that, would be, that would be fun. I can do an episode on that. Yeah, that's for Patreon subscribers only. <laughs> oh, that's for Connor's my only fan subscribers. Yeah. yeah. I should, a little break away from the interpretation, I should say we don't have a Patreon yet. We're meme -in. We're just being a little meme -me boys, but we do have a new Venmo. So if you're interested, but only fans is if you can find it. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hashtag sounds for your ear rocks. <laughs> Hashtag pottery for your ear rocks. <laughs> Hashtag gold for your cracks. Oh, oh, okay, okay, sir. <laughs> sir. Anyway, back, back, back on the train. Um, so yeah, I agree with Ra. I mean, that was a very artistic and very niche kind of description of this album. But I mean, it's very true. I mean, you see in the very first verse, you know, he kind of has, he's being told as a child, these kind of expectations, you know, these expectations for success. And you see in the very first pre-chorus, like the reality of life, you know, he can't get a job and he's living with his mom. And it's just such a, I guess, a brutal description of the modern world. You know, that's something that we all kind of understand and can relate to. I mean, it's one of those things, too, where I feel like it's detrimental if people think they really are so special, you know? Um, each of us is unique, right? There's no one else who's like you on this planet. You are special to that extent, but there's so much more that makes us not unique, um, you know? So I, I think this song is just kind of, like, reflective of that in a certain way. Um, you know, people who think that they're so much special and this and that, like, at some point, it's going to catch up with you that you are just another of one of millions, you know? Um, and I don't know, that's something else that I was kind of thinking about for this song. Like, you know, you're being told like, oh, you're going to grow up and be famous or grow up and be like some track star or whatever this guy's. Yeah. Flash Gordon, um, you know, that's not a track star. <laughs> I don't know. It's like an '80s thing. Uh, yeah, he was like a space person, you know, like fighting crime in space and whatnot. I think. But he did wear a track I suit, so I think Corral isn't wrong there. Thank <clears throat> you. Yeah, no, it's I don't know. It's just like, um, yeah, I think it catches up with you at some point. That reality, like you were saying, and. It's, uh, I don't know, <laughs> sad, but also, I don't know, not sad. Life yeah, is just weird. Yeah, and I think that's kind of like represented in the music video. I mean, we'll talk about it more in the next song, but one of, I guess, the central, like, symbols in these music videos is this kid that just seems to be running around, doing what he wants, having fun, and it almost seems like all the other characters are envious of him, so... You know, I think we talked about this in the Billie Eilish album, but the realities of becoming an adult, you know, understanding what Hara said, you know, the kind of, as you get older and you kind of lose that childlike naivety and you just become another cog in the machine, you know? Ugh, how sad. How awful. Thanks for that. Subscribe to Connor's OnlyFans for more depressing daily messages of what your life will be like in 10 years. Speaking now, of depressing messages, there's uh, Sylvia Platt's metaphor of the fig tree um that ties in thematically of like it's uh, a baby boy no, <laughs> <laughs> yes um uh it's like her character i think it's in the bell jar um she's sitting under this fig tree like she's starving i think um basically she's imagining all the different branches and like ways that her life could go is like the ways the branches separate out uh and as she goes down the course of her life different branches like die and you know there is a winnowing away of opportunity as she gets older. Yeah, no, it's depressing as shit. But um, I think there's something to that for this song with, you know, here's a person who was told had so much promise and so many good things, you know, was such a like special kid, um, but none of that really materialized. And here he's kind of like stuck at some point in his life and kind of just going through the motions of life and not really 
uh, having adapted to what his like current scenario is. Mm. Snaps for Chase. Thank you. Thank you. Deserved. Thank you. Mm. Amazing. All right, guys. Any other comments on the song Life Itself? We haven't come to the theme of Baby Boy yet, but <laughs> we have oh, yeah. touched upon Codeine and Coca Cola. Intensely <laughs> millennial mood here. All you baby boys out there, keep listening. You're listening to Otakonia Radio, Japanese pottery for your ear rocks, fig trees for your gardens. Don't be a dying branch. That's, yeah, fair. That could be a t-shirt right there. That could be a t-shirt. Don't be a dying branch. All righty, all you white crayons out there, we're going to about to listen to the song Youth by Glass Animals. You're listening to Otakonia Radio. We'll be right back after Chase blows his nose again. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Are you guys ready for youth? Yes. Welcome back. I hope the elephant didn't scare you off. Uh, you're listening to Otakonia Radio. We are doing a bonus episode, Chase's Pick. We're doing the album, How to Be a Human Being. Chase, would you like to start us off? Yeah. Uh, this is another one of the songs that I listened to uh, at first without really noticing the lyrics. And then when I did pay attention to them, uh, the song is, it hits. Um, the way I interpret the song is it's a uh, mom who gave her child up for adoption or for some reason does not have contact with her kid um, and is kind of like painfully wishing uh, that her kid has the best life possible, the kind of life that she could never really have given to the kid and still uh wishing like for the like happiness for that kid to know that uh his mom still loves him even if there's no real contact ever between them so it hit hard and it hits even harder when you you know realize that this is inspired from a true story that a sad a sad story that a mother told about her son to the lead singer of the band while they were on tour so kind of also adds that human element to the album which is like what's so amazing about it you know these story driven characters yeah i really like that interpretation of the song by the way mm. it's thanks nice. it's good i like it i don't yeah shout out to all the baby boys out there oh uh, we going heavy in the baby boy for this song i mean it's a it says boy but we haven't come across baby boy which is mm. very important very okay important. okay this is only boy without the modifier my apologies I mean, he was a baby boy, but now he's just a boy. Mm. It's very true. It's very true. And even though we're memeing, that's so deep. Nice one, hurrah. Because youth, uh, a direct quote, a direct quote. Uh, youth is about the nostalgia and strange mix of happiness and sadness that swirls around it. It is sung from a parent to a child. Mm. Baby boys becoming boys out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think this really captures everything that the mom wants for the kid. Uh, the chorus wants you to be happy, getting dizzy on caffeine, friends that make you laugh and like your dad be like, wishing for this kid the carefree, happy youth that arguably the character in the first song, Life Itself had of, you know, like all these things that are what make childhood like this protected time in your life. What's that thing though? It's like youth is wasted on the young too. God damn right it is. <laughs> No, no, no. Well, it's, I, the chorus is definitely my favorite. Dizzy on Caffeine is one, like, probably my favorite lyric in this whole song. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not just caffeine. It's not just carefree. It's like carefree to the point of being daffy. <laughs> like, you know, when you, it's just like, I think of being, you know, like high school, middle school, maybe like early college when you're like, Think about your freshman year of college, right? Mm. Like, what was going on with your life? Um, you don't know. You're probably just figuring out a lot of things for the first time. And Laundry. Dappy? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that reverberates a lot in my mind with what it is to be, like, young and not know a lot of things. But you're just kind of vibing until you figure it out. And I think there's like a strange, I think that's definitely reflected in the music video. And there's a strange sadness in the music video. I mean, for youth, you're watching this waiter 
who, you know, is kind of distracted, seems to be looking for something that isn't there in her life. And across this music video, there's this kid that's, you know, drinking caffeine, dancing on the tables, running around. And she's like looking for this, uh, this kid kind of symbolically, you know, almost as if life kind of loses its luster when becoming an adult, like we said earlier, you know, losing that childlike naivety and sense of wonder, you know, like we said, reality kind of has a way to hit you in the heart and the gut as her output. Damn, all music do be ageist though, huh? (laughs) (laughs) On another note, um, I think my favorite lyric in the song is, uh, I know you can make it right. So full verse is like, uh, fly, feel your mother at your side. Don't you know you got my eyes? I'll make you fly. You'll be happy all the time. I know you can make it right. I think there's a lot of regret that this mom has for things in her own life that she's hoping that her son can sort of like fix with uh, life lived in a way that she thinks is better. That sort of like atones or sort of like makes up for some of those mistakes that she feels, which is really sad. Um, But yeah. Like a dying branch of a fig tree. Exactly. A baby boy bud saves the fig tree branch. All comes back to baby boy. Sylvia Plath. <laughs> also, fun facts about this song. The synthesizer is actually a sample of an owl. So, you know, mm-hmm. they played the owl for this song. You know, no no animals were heard in the, the making of this record, but we got some animals on the synth, you know, some hoot hoots for the people. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we could come up with some, like, literary student interpretation of why it's an owl but maybe it just sounds cool that's probably it (laughs) just like sampling different sounds and like yeah Yeah. oh this sounds like really cool yeah like owls in um ancient greece were associated with like wisdom and things of that nature if you really want to get into it you could be like you know this mother would perhaps like the wisdom for her future son to do what she did not and know what she did not or uh, reflexively a lack of wisdom, which one has in their youth, something like that. But at this point, I'm just memeing. Um, I really, knowing Wavy Davy, this was definitely like, bruh, this is a <laughs> sound. Dude, this owl is so wild, man. Have you ever looked at an owl, bro? Bruh, it's like Billie Eilish recording her dog. <laughs> this is why we have her on the podcast, because if if we didn't it would just be like dude bro dude but hara brings the the facts heart of the paint i mean that was your little segment on on greek tragic stories so i hope you guys all be learned now. that wasn't even tra- you want me to tell you about tragedy son that was just a fact a tragedy. Was, tragedy. i'll never forget we watched um what is is oedipus the one that had to like claw out his eyes because there was like this love triangle with his mom and stuff in high school we watched a version of that like a movie but everyone was a vegetable kind of like veggie tales i don't know <laughs> i don't know what it's called or why we had to do that but they'll forever be haunted in my mind i think he was like a potato if i'm not mistaken but could you be- watch pan's labyrinth only because you have a fear of eyes and there's this one scene where it's just Potato, potato, you would love it and hate it. You would hate it. I'm sorry. Like, did they pick potato for Oedipus only for the pun of like he can claw his eyes out? Because that is like, (laughs) you have nailed the pun, but in the worst possible moment, that's like making a pun at a funeral. Like, wrong moment, buddy. Also, hurrah to address your Pan's Labyrinth comment. Uh, one Tool fan took a Tool song and put it to that scene of the, the eye monster. So pretty funny. Spot on meme, hurrah. Oh, thank you. I Pan's Labyrinth is weird, but it's definitely a cult classic, you know? Really thematically kind of goes with his album, so nice. I don't know if it goes with this one. I, it's definitely a Tool vibe. I can definitely <laughs> see why Tool people would be like, yeah, Pan's Labyrinth. Well, it's about like growing up and being like childlike in like a time of war and like the realities and escapism, you know. Um, she don't grow up. That's uh, well, well. Oh, spoiler alert for everyone who hasn't seen complicated the complicated question. It's, I personally okay. We're not getting into this. Next song. Some glass animals. Next next song, uh Greek tragedies for your ear rocks. Um fig and trees. Labyrinth theories for your ear rocks. There's probably an owl screeching around in there or something. 
<laughs> Season two, episode three. This episode brought to you by Haraz Owl Noises. Check out <laughs> check out the new show on Onukonia coming this Wednesday. Haraz makes animal noises. I can also do cats and pigs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway season two episode three let's get into it if you're How listening about you start us off connor <laughs> on this one yeah oof, i feel personally attacked this song is someone who does nothing all day every day and there's a lot of references to psychedelic cartoons old video games uh including adventure time chase is a big fan of adventure time and yep. uh Sonically, they just try to make a song that was floating around this character's brain, you know, sounds about cartoons, video games, and eating mayonnaise out of a jar. Mm. Yep. Uh, this song has my favorite lyric in the entire album. Um, definitely other ones are maybe more emotionally resonant, but I don't know, just like the vibes of this one really hit for me. Uh, Liquid TV Afternoons is that... <laughs> The number of liquid TV afternoons watching cartoons that I've had, uh, very uh, large number, but it really captures the way it all just kind of like blends together on the couch and like some lazy, hot, sunny summer afternoon. It just perfect word choice there. And there's also like, like you said, this is kind of a fun and funny song. There's also this undertone of maybe something meaningful. Maybe we can get some snaps for her on this one. But, uh, you know, there's this undertone of her being in this relationship that's mutually destructive and sometimes fun but sometimes sad and I think that's kind of the main point of her doing nothing you know she's not really sure of where she's at in her life what she wants to do with her life and we kind of see in the music video you know she's running through all these old cartoons and uh, video games and in this music video she's always trying to escape this man so you know it's a fun song it's really funny the lyrics are awesome like chase said but also yeah, there is a weird hint of something serious too also kind of interweaved within the the funness and mayonnaise i mean people who are business in the front party in the back like no, no no hear me out hear me out hear me out i know these like you we all know people who are like this you know they're yeah. fun you call them and it's like hey you want to go out you want to go do this you want to go do that they're down for everything right but like you can't do that realistically it's not sustainable because it's exhausting then you end up having cereal for breakfast and lunch and dinner and your house is a mess and like oh guess the only thing in my fridge is mayonnaise and it's 11 o'clock p.m you know mm. um so what happens when there's too much fun too much mayonnaise too much mayonnaise. also very important point this is the first time we see the lyric, baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! All right, all you baby boys out there, get your ears tuned. All right, hurrah, hit us with the baby boy. Dude, I love baby boy. That's all I want to say about this. I just, it's just, I don't know. I really like that lyric. I think it's a lot of fun. And it comes up in a few songs in this album. Um, so that's why I was like, what is going on with baby boy here? There's a lot of usage of the word baby, of the word boy, and baby boy in this album. Serious, so very either mysterious. Either way, Davy is just projecting here how he feels about himself, um, or you know, there's a lot of baby boys in a life as we know it, um, a lot of growing up to do in youth, and also in season two, episode three, people who are adults but they act like baby boys. Who's the baby boy mascot of Onokonia Radio? Tag yourself. Oh, me. Yeah, easy. Done. It's Chase. He's the baby boy. Look yeah. Him. Hello. It me. And baby. And baby. And boy. <laughs> Connor, you could be the mar- a jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> sometimes you're the pigeon. Sometimes you're the statue. Yeah. See, what I've always wanted to do is finish out a mayonnaise jar, clean it out, and fill it with vanilla pudding and go and eat it somewhere like in a park. Um, just because I feel like it would be nice. It would be chaotic and people would be doing double takes, you know? I feel like that's how you get banned from public spaces, you know? No, 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 because it's not illegal. Who's going to come and tell you, like, you shouldn't be eating theoretical mayonnaise out of a jar? Buddy, it's vanilla pudding, and this is a free country. That's what I'm going to do when COVID's over because I've earned it. Can we please change? I know this is a branding nightmare, but can we change the name of our podcast to Theoretical Mayonnaise? <laughs> Yes. That could be our punk band. Otaconia, theoretical mayonnaise for your, your rocks. 
Dude, we're all dude. white as fuck. Okay, then that's yep, yep, yep. I think it'd be a great idea. This is why everyone should send us money on Venmo. Um, we should make a T-shirt with all of our wrong like catchphrases. Like you know, it's Otoconia sounds for your rocks, but we should make and compile a list of every time we've gone blank for your ear rocks and make a T-shirt with just all all those sayings. Imagine filling your ear rocks with theoretical mayonnaise. That's what listening to this is like. Theoretically. Oh. Theoretically. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, going back to like, we all know a person like the person in the song. Yeah, I think they are kind of substituting like video games and other things for any sort of like life stuff where like video games are like centered around, you know, here is clear objective, you go do thing, achieve thing, thumbs up. Uh, straight up like dopamine highway on that. But it's like this person is kind of doing that instead of, yeah, not using a cookie as a coaster. Like, buddy, come on. Like, Cookies are for yeah. food, not coasters. Yes, mayonnaise is not for food. For <laughs> coasters. <laughs> Is a lifestyle. Is mayonnaise a lifestyle? Right. So, like, yeah, I think this captures someone that probably everybody knows in their life of like, yeah, they're fun and it's great, but you always have this feeling of like, God, like, I feel like you could do so much more if you like, you know, cut your life kind of together. Yeah, Amazing. All broken and unique in individual ways, like pottery. Like pottery. <laughs> Hey guys, did you know this fun fact about Japanese pottery? <laughs> Why don't you tell us, Connor? <laughs> Coming this Tuesday, Otakoni Radio, Chase and Haradu Pot. Uh, I almost said do pottery, but yeah, do pottery. <laughs> I'd love to learn pottery. I want to take a pottery class. That'd be pretty dope. Once, once the once the bovid disappears, I'm gonna go do pottery. Once the panini's over. Once the panini <laughs> is over. Anyway, that was season two, episode three. Are you guys ready to move on to pork soda? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. You guys are listening to Otakonia Radio. Theoretical mayonnaise for your ear rocks. Let's get into it. This song's just fun. Like, we can go into just, like, analysis of this, but, like, it's just a fun uh, vibe to a song. Uh, pineapples are in my head all the time, 24-7. This is probably one of my favorite songs off this album, and um, Lore theoretical lore like mm. the theoretical mayonnaise says that this was just wavy davy chilling out and some dude who was like screaming in the street you know perhaps homeless or something of that nature was screaming like pineapples are in my head and that's yeah it's a mood sometimes i mean yeah kind of like close to the actual thing like he Isn't thinks yeah, yeah he overheard like a homeless person saying this like probably not what they said but like it kind of just like stuck in my head for a long time so connor do you want to go through the fun fact of what the intro to the song is <laughs> well I, I would like to take a step back chase and uh mm -hmm. i would like to address the other inspiration for this song um they were on tour and you know sorry i gotta start here because this is pure me and me right here uh -huh. um they saw a tattoo this woman had a tattoo of this pig and i'm not exaggerating here it looks like something that you you and i draw would draw chase and <laughs> this lady was just like yeah i like pork soda and that's that's how we got this song homeless man plus t poor poorly drawn tattoo i mean that's theoretical mayonnaise right there yeah but it's nice chase would you yeah. like to go, would you like to go into the uh the fun fact you were you were thinking about yeah, so the intro to the song uh, was uh, intended to sound like what it would sound like approaching a group of people out on the street singing this song, like around like a fire, right? Just kind of like chanting this to each other. Pork soda, pork we, soda. we need to find an animator to animate hurrah eating mayonnaise, aka theoretical mayonnaise, because it's putting on a park bench and these cult people come up with like candles and like deer antlers and start chanting pork soda yeah pineapples just like ringing around her head like the uh like birds for cartoons i am a cult leader and don't you forget this theoretical mayonnaise conversation because 
come the end of COVID, once everyone has either vaccinated themselves, killed themselves, or, you know, lived through infection, it's going to go one of three ways. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm just a realist. Oh, according um, to your radio, nightmares for your ear rocks. I hope you guys all <laughs> dream of that scene that we vividly described there. Yeah, I'm going to call you up, Connor, and be like, yo, time for that mayonnaise. Amazing. The warning. You've been warned now, okay? This is the most meme chaotic episode of Otokonia Radio thus, thus date. All of our spiciness has built up over this week. It really has. It's been a rough week. It's been like sub-zero freezing temperatures here. Yeah, we got that sriracha mayo going on right now. Ooh. Theoretical sriracha. Theoretical sriracha mayo, like spicy tuna roll. Is, anyway, sorry. Now I'm hungry for pork soda. Pineapples <laughs> are in my head. We should just sound bite that, and that should be when we say we're going into the song, we'll just loop that for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Also, to go off of Chase's fun fact and to bring us back, the the drum sounds are made from <laughs> old, old bins and trash pieces of metal that they found in the studio. So it kind of sounds like street drummers. Um, so it kind of goes with that Colt's on a bench eating mayonnaise vibe yeah but in all, in all seriousness there is some deepness to the song you know mm-hmm. no it is yeah the music video is kind of these two elderly people like chase you know they got bad knees and their back hurts and they got the arthritis the rightus Check um, the above. hey 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 <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and these people like it, the song kind of shows how they how we change in relationships and how you know, in the beginning of the song, they just can't sound, seem to find each other. You know, she's dancing with her dog and he's just watching TV all day. And then in the end of the music video, they kind of fall through the ceiling and have this moment. And so it's really a fun song, a Mimi song, but also does have this deep underlying meaning of, you know, how we change and, you know, how we express affection for one another. The thing is, I also wasn't sure if the song was trying to comment on society's view of homeless people. Um, because this whole lyric that says, you know, um, where was it? You sure you got the right song? Yeah, it's Pork Soda. Isn't it the one that says, like, maybe you think I'm just a bum, maybe I'm just fucking scum, et cetera, yeah. et cetera? I oh, feel yeah. like, I, I, I can't find the lyric right now, I'm sorry. Um, Somebody said I'm a fucking slum. Don't you know that I belong? Maybe you're fucking dumb. Maybe I'm just a bum. Maybe you're fucking scum. Then you go psycho chum. I want you for the world. I want you all the time. Right. I mean, I think, I don't know if that's meant to touch on um, just kind of like a larger societal commentary. But the thing is that, you know, in general, I would argue that a lot of people look down on individuals who find themselves in hard times. Maybe they're homeless and living on the street or kind of you know dealing with significant poverty um and I like that line that says don't know that I belong like just because these people are marginalized um or you know less have less than other individuals it doesn't mean that they're not people Mm. it doesn't mean that they're not deserving of some common human decency like you know a place to live when it is negative degrees outside you know um if for all our viewers out there, if you haven't noticed, I'm a uh, pretty socially liberal. <laughs> um, I mean, once you told them that you were eating mayonnaise on a bench, I think they got it. Yeah, they probably were like, this girl, she needs, yeah, she needs the socially liberated vibes to eat mayonnaise <laughs> on the bench. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not just that these people are scum. It's not just that they're bums, you know. Um, there is a reason for a lot of this. Um, maybe it's because they got nobody because they're brain dead. Um, maybe they lost their house in a fiscal crisis or whatever. Maybe they lost their house because of a giant pandemic that, you know, some individuals have chosen to largely ignore. I have no Uh, idea what you're talking about. Please enlighten me. I can't. (laughs) I can't, Chase. I'm going to eat mayonnaise out of a jar. So, you know, that's um, something that I was thinking about for this song. And maybe that's also one of the reasons that it's one of my favorite songs because it is a lot of fun. It's a fun vibe. 
and there is a lot to meme about it, but I, I think all of these songs, once you just scratch the surface a little bit, it's like, oh, this is some big bo- baby boy, big boy commentary. Amazing. This episode just, just should be called Baby Boy. Thank you. It's the theme. <laughs> no, it should be baby boy, big boy commentary. That's the uh, tagline <laughs> for the episode. That's our new catchphrase, guys. <laughs> for your ear rocks. For your ear rocks. Amazing. All right. Should we get into our last song or any other final comments on pork soda? Let's talk about Agnes. Yeah. All right. Let's do it, guys. Uh, you're listening to Otoconia Radio. Uh, pandemic for your ear rocks. <laughs> Listening to Big Boy, Baby Boy, Manday's Jar commentary for your ear rocks. Mm. We should we should make a theme song and that will be like the opening lyric. Baby Boy, Big Boy, commentary for your ear rocks. See, I think it should be a different shit post every single time. Mm. Really mm. authenticity right there. We should have a, a session, a creative session. You know, like what they do with Apple where they're like, we need to make a new product. Like, Let's sit in a circle and like, you know, brain tank. We'll just fill ourselves with mayonnaise, get drunk off mayonnaise and make like 20 theme songs. And every single theme song will have stocks for the few. I mean, that's a business idea right there. You're going to have to repitch that to me wearing a black turtleneck because like so far I don't buy it at all. Uh, All I'm saying is that all of those people out there who are trying to build muscle from protein shakes, mayonnaise is just eggs. So... (laughs) We're going to do an Apple style presentation where we all wear turtlenecks and like black rimmed glasses. And we'll be like, turn your eyes to the screen. In 2022, <laughs> we don't just eat mayonnaise. We have mayonnaise 2.0 by Otoconia Radio. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Now I'm just imagining some like power lifter at the gym with just not a water bottle. It's just a jar of mayonnaise. And this is my workout mayonnaise and just scoops it into his mouth and then does like a like power set. What an image right there. Thank you for that. You're welcome. We, we need to hire Frank the Tank, one of our good friends, fellow student, power lifter. We need him to become the mayonnaise man. And we need like a mascot. He could be like, uh, y- you guys watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Not really, no. but go on. Uh, but the trash man, you know, but Frank would be the mayonnaise man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the ice cream man, but more mayo than ice cream. <laughs> and and when his truck drives down the street, you hear the Otoconia theme song. Otoconia, Otoconia. Is mayonnaise a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> wow, guys, this episode is creamy, pure, and full of lipids, just like mayonnaise. I, mm, you should edit that part out. Yeah, I don't know what rating you want for this, but that's like <laughs> X-rated right there. Guys, the next time we're in person doing this, uh, spoiler alert, this is a Zoom podcast. Our next Instagram like photo shoot, jar of mayonnaise. That's true. I need to buy some mayonnaise. We don't have any right now. None of that satanic miracle whip crap. Like, get out of here. No, of course not. I buy organic mayonnaise. Shocking. <laughs> With olive oil. I, ooh, I actually. <laughs> this is going to be such a stark contrast when we're memeing about mayonnaise going into the song Agnes. So we apologize for our insensitive joking of mayonnaise. Yeah. All right. Should we dive into Agnes? Let's dive. You're listening to Otoconia Radio. Coming up next, Agnes. Yeah. So. Genuine trigger warning for the song. The song is about suicide. Uh, if that's something that's particularly triggering for you, would recommend uh, not listening to this part. Uh, Connor, if you can figure out like whatever time signature to jump mm. to and put it in the edits, they can jump to. Because uh, the song is pretty heavy. Um, so on that note, we can dive in, but want to get that out of the way. Spoiler alert, I do not know how to do that with the timestamps. So go back if to our main conversation. Maybe just like... This is going to be the last song of the podcast anyway, so uh, we'll bid you adieu now. Yeah. Adieu. 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 Anyway. Adieu, adieu. So the song is my favorite on the album. I think, Connor, you agreed. Yes. Um, Do you want to start off with a discussion of the music video? So amazing. Uh, Chase, I, when I asked Chase, I was like, hey, I'm going to listen to this album. Where should I start? Should I just go from song one to the end? Should I watch the music videos? What should I do? And Chase said, 
go to the description in the uh, music video of Agnes. And it's amazingly poetic, very sad, very dark. And that mixed in with the symbolism of the music video is just really amazing. I mean, we've talked about this theme on other albums. Uh, check out 13th Step, uh, the lowest rated Otoconia video by me solo episode. But a lot of themes of... <laughs> <laughs> sad baby boy but um a lot of themes of uh, you know suicide drug abuse that sort of thing um i'm sure we've discussed this on other albums but uh the music video he is in this centrifuge and he's kind of spinning around and there's this really haunting i want to get the direct quote so I'll, I'll take a second to look it up but there's this quote about how the g-force and the spinning is like wrenching at his heart and that's how he felt hearing the news of you know, someone that you care about committing suicide. And it's just a really amazing concept, uh, really thoughtful and symbolic. And it just really kind of touched me. Like even before I listened to the song, I saw that and I was like, wow, this is, you know, ingenious. What a way to kind of describe, describe, not describe, describe the sensation of how sad and heart-wrenching this song is. Yeah. Do you want to pull up the direct quote? Yeah, sorry, give me one second. No. All righty, we got it right here. I highly recommend everyone to check this out because this really was part of the, I mean, the most awesome part uh, of the album. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's kind of the last sentence. I mean, he's describing like the physical effects. I won't read it all, but he goes, but the most striking thing is the way that the machine pulls on your heart. You can actually feel it struggling to beat and changing shape, flattening inside your chest. It's similar to that horrible sinking, tugging heartache that comes only with the complete and overwhelming sadness. And then you pass out. I mean, just an amazing kind of description. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um... I don't know if you guys have ever had someone in your life commit suicide. Mm -hmm. um, there was a counselor of mine at school who I was very close to and had helped me through a lot of my own stuff who um, ended up killing himself. And yeah, it's just um, one of those things where like, <sighs> whenever anyone dies, it really sucks. But I think it's just like, a little bit extra knowing that that person felt bad enough to do it to themselves um and that heart-wrenching feeling um reminds me of this uh heart condition that can happen just from like emotional strain it's called takotsubo 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 um carditis and it's like people who have lost loved ones or undergo this like huge emotional trauma um it feels like they're having a heart attack your heart acts like it's having a heart attack basically and you're not it's just that like you're literally your heart is breaking um so a semi-lighthearted fun fact about that uh, uh, cute thanks takatsubo refers to uh, a japanese octopus trap um that the heart resembles um and what i find metaphorically resonant about that is the heart physically changes its shape mm -hmm. when it's going undergoing this extreme stress and heartbreak Wow, you guys have really pulled the power move on me and really studied your Japanese culture for some reason. And then <laughs> I mean, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> absolutely demolished me. I'm just sitting here like, oh, mayonnaise, baby boy. And you guys are like, actually, in the 18th century, there was this octopus trap that. So kudos to you. You guys are bringing the, the class and the. the You've really brought in a lot of Japanese knowledge here, <laughs> mostly from the internet. Yeah, I mean, one of them is art, the other one is medicine. They both happen to be Japanese, I guess. Um, yeah. Also, I had a refresher course on myocardial diseases the other day at work, so. Rip. <laughs> no, it was helpful, it was helpful. <laughs> but amazing. I mean, yeah, honestly, this is my favorite song on the album. And just the song, I mean, this album in general is like a really cool concept, just taking these stories and very human experiences and putting them into an album. I think, 
I mean, as you see a lot of the albums that we covered on Odaconia, I think gravitate towards that. I mean, Tools Lateralis, kind of a spiritual take on the human experience, you know, the 13th step, kind of the struggles of addiction and suicide. Billy Eilish, you know, the the aspect of growing up and going into adulthood. I mean, we've picked so many albums that kind of center on these themes. And it's really cool that these themes are universal and kind of cross genres. I mean, we talked about in Mac Miller, uh, Swimming, which is more of like a rap and R&B album. So it's very cool that these concepts kind of transcend genre and transcend artists. And one of the cool things that, you know, is fun about Otoconia is, you know, Chase brought this album that I've never heard before. And it hits a lot of these similar themes and concepts in music that I listen to. So very cool. Yeah, I mean, we're all just people. And I think trying to make sense of your experience and, you know, the happiness, the sadness, difficulties, overcoming struggles, um, dealing with mortality and thoughts of it, um, eating mayonnaise, you know, they're just themes that transcend time. And I think that is what defines being human. Baby boy baby boy yeah the thing i like most about this song is i think it's an exercise in pretty radical empathy that it's done from the perspective of the person uh a friend of agnes um but it's really trying to empathize with the pain that she was going through and understand it and not just say like oh you you know you committed suicide and this affected me so much but like you know like the lyric that I like most about the song is uh, living on borrowed time from Mr. Madness. You know, it's like, you know, maybe you were going through something and it was going to take you anyway. Like this is like a disease, like anything else. Like we had our time with you and it's really sad that you're gone, but it's gone. The time is over. Um, I think songs like this, songs that really get you to, understand someone else's experience, the things that they've gone through. Uh, some of the best things that art can do is to really understand another person, their life as much as you can, and really try and emotionally inhabit what they're going through. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. There is such a tragedy to this song and this concept. So, snaps to Chase. Snaps. <laughs> snaps. Thank you. Man, that's, that's the peak right there, Chase. Should we just end it right there? You got your snaps um no i mean there's like one other thing i'd like to talk mm. about uh Do it. There hit, is, it. hit it chase double snap double snap uh maybe what you can arguably think of for this song um more so in the act of writing it there's like a really old christian concept of radical hope um that even though the person is gone you can still you know pray for them and wish for them i'm probably butchering the concept but like just that they're gone does not fully erase your connection with that person and it can still mean something you can still hope for them and pray for them even though they are gone from here and i think that's part of what this song is about sort of radical hope mm. yeah and i think that's kind of the whole you know music video it's almost like he did this centrifuge as almost like a meditation to like understand what he was feeling the sadness he was feeling and almost to give it kind of a physical quality you know it's I think it's sometimes hard to capture the mental pain. You know, physical pain is so much more straightforward. And, you know, maybe in this centrifuge, he was able to translate some of this mental pain and physical pain to really understand what he was experiencing. So really amazing uh, tie-in there, Chase. Thanks. All righty, guys. Any final comments on this album in general? There's quite a few songs we didn't cover, uh, but highly recommend listening to all of them. Like, mostly I'll, you know, pick a couple of songs here and there out of like an album. Uh, and maybe this isn't exactly everyone's vibe, but it's an album I would recommend, you know, like listen to it, every song, like in order and just like kind of walk your way through it. Amazing. Hurrah, any final comments for the listeners, the baby boys out there? Um, all time is borrowed time, so you should eat mayonnaise or veganaise if you're allergic or vegan. Uh, we actually have that patent, uh, that patent pending, so no one can steal that idea of vegan. Yeah, I think there is vegan mayonnaise, and they make it with avocado or something, but it was really good. I tried it. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Put some avocado toast with some veganaise. Goddamn, you'll never own a home, but that shit would taste delicious. <laughs> 
<laughs> Millennials in my right, Chase. Connor, last thoughts? Last thoughts. Thank you guys for listening to Oticonia. This has been a fun, fun undertaking. Um, I've really had fun kind of reaching out to my friends and talking about music. Always a good time. Um, this is another one we don't have in the collection of the vinyl library, so uh, that would be a great pickup, hopefully, in the future. Really love this band. I'm excited to do more albums with Chase and you as well, Hurrah. Uh, but yeah, keep listening to Otoconia Radio. Thank you to all the fans out there and to our sponsors. Uh, this has been a really kind of a fun journey and a good experience. Uh, we did just start a new Venmo. Um, I mean, what I, like I said in the post, the goal of Otoconia Radio is and always will be to have fun, but if you guys want to donate for us to get more podcast equipment or vinyl, uh, feel free to do so. You can check us out on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, and the Purple app, Apple Podcasts. So thank you guys for listening. This was a really fun episode. And hopefully we can get back together in person again when COVID is under control and people eat their mayonnaise. Yeah, exactly. Otoconia, thanks for listening. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, and baby panini, boys something about that. Yeah. Rocks. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, guys. This was an episode of Otoconia Radio. Uh, This is Chase's pick. So amazing. Thank you, Chase. Yo.